We'll just leave that there because former South Australian Premier Jay Weatherall is speaking in Parliament. representative to stand in their name because you are, you are standing uh, on the shoulders of giants. You're standing on um, uh, the platform that's been created in our case um, by uh, people that have been uh, replicating Labor governments uh, since the 1890s. And as I um, often say, uh, this is the first place in the world that elected a majority Labor government in this very chamber. And uh, it's a proud tradition. And so when you're asked to represent a party of that significance and, 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 recent, and of great contemporary success, uh, it's an extraordinary privilege. And I thank uh, each of the constituent elements of the party, uh, the, the affiliates, the trade union movement, and all those who chose to select me to, to, to represent them in this place. Um, I also want to thank my colleagues, all of the um, colleagues that are sitting around me, um, those present and also those past, who have sustained me in this role. You can't do anything by yourself in this business. It, we are all a product of our capacity to work uh, with other people. Um, you've only got one vote. <laughs> you need more than that to get anything done. So that involves bringing other people with you. So to the extent that they decide to stand with you and support you and uh, create uh, uh, an environment where you feel confident enough to advance an idea, uh, it is entirely, it is entirely uh, through your support and, and your um, loyalty uh, as well. Loyalty that's tested when things are tough, uh, which... Um, uh, it has, has allowed me to, to achieve everything that, that I've managed to achieve in this place. So thank you all so much. Um, and uh, as uh, uh, I think some of our fellow uh, federal colleagues uh, are understanding, uh, the idea of, of governing when you have to look over your shoulder all of the time is really difficult. And so it's, it's one of the things that I've always uh, valued was the, the strength and the unity of purpose that exists. Um, and uh, it, it's, a, it's a pattern and a model. It's, it's, it's something that should be acknowledged, that the success of, of, of our party has in large measure been due to its, its unity. And um, it's something that others would be well, well advised to copy. Um, I also want to talk about that the myriad of, uh, of staff in one form or another who have supported me uh, to allow me to, to continue this work. Obviously there's the electorate office and I've, I've been blessed with extraordinary electoral office staff and they've, much of the burden's fallen on them because I haven't been uh, as, um, as present a local member having had the good fortune of going to the ministry back in 2002. Um, I, um, um, for the last um, nine months, have been more of a local member than I had in the previous 16 years. <laughs> Uh, and that's actually been a really interesting and enjoyable experience, but so much of the burden over that period fell on them, and I want to thank each of them for their, their support. My ministerial advisers, uh, the advisers in the Premier's office, the great thing about these roles is they attract really the best and brightest. People want to be at the centre of government making a difference, and you just get surrounded by extraordinary people that help you do your job and make you look much better than you might be if you were struggling along on your own. Um, I also want to single out drivers. Um, I've had a couple of drivers throughout the course of my career, and famously uh, um, Steve Tippins was my driver for a long time, and I can remember coming up to the 2010 election where I thought we'd lose, and my greatest, the, and I packed up my office, um, uh, thinking that we were going to be uh, kicked out in 2010, and. The greatest sadness I had, I must say, at that time was because uh, I had two very young daughters and that uh, Steve Tiffins was like there, was sort of, and actually realised he'd spent more time with, with the, my daughters than perhaps any other, other than myself, any other sort of male. So he was like a granddad and I, I just couldn't imagine them being wrenched apart from him in that way. That was the worst uh, part of it. Then, of course, uh, I had... Um, Avdo, uh, who, who took on. In fact, he was, while I was, when I was actually, uh, while I was actually, um, while Steve was on leave, Avdo took over and was actually my acting driver at the time. And I remember him saying in broken English to uh, 
to uh, Steve Tippins when he'd gone back. He says, you give me minister, I give you premier. <laughs> uh, so, uh, but they've, they've always been very close and they're very much a part of uh, the, the family. I also want to thank uh, the public servants. Uh, there's so many of them. There are great public servants in this state. They're often reviled, uh, almost as hated as politicians. Uh, but, they, but they have... Um, uh, it's easy to poke fun at, uh, at public servants, but they, they have to manage all the difficult questions. I mean, government is just one massive, as those opposite are beginning to find, one massive risk management operation <laughs> where all the tough stuff falls into the public sector and uh, the complex public policy issues, the difficult implementation questions. And you're often dealing with vulnerable people, people that are angry, people that are sad, and, um, and they can be demanding. And we expect a lot of our public servants, but they all do extraordinary work. I also want to thank the public servants in this place, those that make sense of our garbled remarks up there at Hansard, uh, all of the, uh, the, the clerks that allow for the smooth running of this place, uh, all of those people that feed us and look after us and, uh, and make this place uh, um, a successful and, and happy and well-run workplace. Um, and then there's a, a myriad of informal advisors, people that, that come into your life, people from the private sector, uh, people from uh, friends um, that you've collected along the way, former members of parliament that become part of your, your mentoring, um, a, a network of people that, that sustain you, uh, that help you through, get through difficult questions, that give you the perspective of experience, uh, that uh, allows you to understand uh, how you might respond to a question by giving you some advice about what may have happened before. Uh, these are very important people and I know we all have them. I don't want to embarrass them by naming them all, but uh, they know who they are. They've been an important part of sustaining me. And of course, and most importantly, my family, uh, my beautiful wife, my two beautiful girls. Um, much of the burden of, um, of public office falls on family members. They don't get to see as much as you as they might like. And when they do get to see you, you can be distracted, uh, which is probably the... I mean, one of the great advances of being a state politician is at least you get to sleep in your own bed. Uh, and, uh, but, um, but sometimes you can be around and not really be around because you've got other things on your mind. Uh, and um, it is... Um, uh, that that's one of the, the sacrifices that families make. I don't know how, frankly, you can be sustained in a leadership role in politics without uh, the love and affection of a family. Um, it's, it's tough. It's really tough. And uh, you need family or friends or some other support system to allow you to get through things. Because it's important when you go home and when the world looks like it's crashing around, uh, down around you, to be able to talk to somebody who's always on your side and who is able to say to you that it's actually not as bad as you think it is. And uh, if you don't have that, it can, it can actually get, uh, it can be overwhelming. So being able to dust yourself off and pick yourself up each day has got a lot to do with your family. And so in a very real sense, anything you achieve uh, is really only achieved with the support of your family. Of course, anything that you achieve and you celebrate the good times are made so much more important because you can share them with your family and that's something that uh, I've always had and always enjoyed. Look, I, I, I don't want to detain you all for too long except I, I just do want to say two serious things. Um, one is um, uh, about what we've managed to achieve. Um, look, the, it, it's hard to select out things which which you're proud of. I mean, there are so many things that I'd like to talk about, but in a more contemporary sense, when I, when I became Premier, uh, we were really hit with three very sudden, sharp shocks uh, right after one another, which, were, which really were challenges. Um, the, uh, the first, of course, was Olympic Dam not going ahead when it was expected to go ahead. And, you know, the, the, the fact of that being there and then the fact of it not being there were, were two very big differences. Uh, and then shortly after that, the aftermath of the GFC, where our, our finances were just uh, absolutely um, wrecked uh, and this, the state's economy was, was, was plunged into a difficult position. Then, of course, the, the news of Holden closing. So we, we really, in, in quick succession, were facing some very significant issues. 
people were predicting double digit unemployment and what we did is we, we really fought back from, from that and decided to, to very assertively tackle uh, these challenges. And I think, I think we should be proud as a state. It wasn't all me, it wasn't all us. It was, it was the state responded to each of those challenges. And it, it said uh, about South Australia that there's a sense of precariousness here because we're perched on the edge of a desert. We, you know, at various stages of our history, it seemed very like our very survival was up for grabs. But the truth is it's not that precarious. It's actually much more secure and sustainable than, than perhaps is commonly understood. Uh, and the fact that we now sitting here you know, have the third um, lowest unemployment rate that we, that we actually have in per capita terms, the third fastest uh, growing economy in the, in the nation, and that that's been an improvement over this period when we've faced these challenges really represents the strength and resilience of this state. And I'm very proud of it. I'm also proud of the fact that at points of time when big questions were asked of us, <laughs> we, we made the right choices. When, when our revenues collapsed and we could have moved, walked away from our infrastructure program, we, we continued to keep building. And so all that you see around you, the infrastructure projects, are because of that critically important decision. When we were told to settle for frigates and that we should wave goodbye to the subs, we said no. We, as a state, we stood up and campaigned for that and we won a great victory. Uh, when Piri and Wyala were threatened, we stood up for those communities. And they, were, they weren't simple decisions. They were big commitments that we had to make to actually ensure those towns survived. And then really, one which is very gratifying, especially on a day like today, when we had the statewide blackout and people were describing our policies as reckless and, and it is idiocy and ideology. We, we held the line on renewable energy and, and today we see there is an acknowledgement that not only are we making a massive contribution to the nation's stability uh, through things like the, the big battery, uh, but we're also saving money and there is an acknowledgement that we are not just a national leader, but a world leader in this critical transition to a low carbon future. So I'm proud of those things. And on a slightly sort of philosophical basis, one of the reasons I wanted to come in here and, and announce it to this parliament that I was uh, retiring is that I believe in this institution and I believe in democracy. And there's nothing, there's nothing uh, uh, that was inevitable about democracy. It, it, historically, it didn't have to be this way. Uh, and there's nothing permanent about it. And in the face of challenges and in the rise of you know, the, the, the populist authoritarian leader, we, we need to be alert to the fact that we have something very precious here that we should protect. Um, it's something I spoke about when I first came in here. I've tried uh, to, uh, to talk about the importance of people being involved in the decisions that uh, shape their lives. I've tried to do something about improving the quality of discourse. I, I, I honestly believe that um, our role as leaders is to talk into existence a public that can act in its own interest through a process of dialogue, asking the big questions and, and trying to introduce a degree of civility into public discourse. Now, I've failed at that from time to time, we all have, uh, but this should always be our guiding star. I want to leave you with a quote. Um, it's, it's in a book written by a South Australian, as it happens, uh, who's now a professor of, um, in this area of democracy, and he was speaking to a South African no novelist who described democracy in this way. It breeds possibility. People's horizons of what is thinkable and doable are stretched. And it is for that reason exciting, infuriating, punctuated by difficult, quarrelsome, ugly and beautiful moments. Thank you. OK, so that was live from the South Australian Parliament. Former Premier Jay Weatherall announcing his retirement there. He sat on the opposition backbench since Labor's loss at the election back in March. The former lawyer was first elected in 2002 and was directly appointed to Premier Mike Rand's cabinet. He replaced Mr Rand as Premier back in 2011. In 2014, he took Labor to an unlikely election victory.
by securing the support of independent MP Jeff Brock and recruiting former Liberal leader Martin Hamilton-Smith to his cabinet. So uh, Jay Weatherall there with his farewell speech to the South Australian Parliament.